big hello from the Tin Man. Um, I know it's a little confusing. My YouTube user account is June Raider 69, but I can't change it, so we're stuck with it. Uh, to know what's going to happen here, you would have had to have watched my previous video on free power. Um, so what we're going to do now is a load test to make sure that that free power is actually there. So we've got our three caps as per usual and yes Dave they're out of the welder um, but just off the shelf caps. So first thing we'll do is just make sure there's no charge in any of the caps. Get our trusty old cheapo meter. Uh, there was a member of the TEEP forum asked me why my meter was reading voltage when there's nothing hooked onto it. It's an auto range meter. At the moment it's reading 10.3 millivolts, uh, which they do. If I short it out, of course, it'll drop, but it's just ranging. If I grab the two ends, you'll see I put out and make it go crazy as well. So that's all that's doing. There's nothing wrong with the meter, it's just very sensitive meter. So we're just going to check the voltages in these caps just so you can see there's no hidden batteries. We've got 0 0.04 in that one, 0 0.02 in that one, 0 0.02 in that one. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to use this as our charged battery if you want to call it a battery. I use caps because the results are instant. Don't have to let them sit for two hours for the voltage to settle and what's in them is what you'll get out of them. Um, unlike batteries you have to put 20% more in than you want to take out of them just due to losses in the chemical process and all that. So this one's going to be our flat run battery and when we use the SSG pulse motor that'll be our charge battery so we'll put that aside for the time being. I've got my power supply set at 20 volts um, we're going to use our 24 volt globe as a load so first I'm going to charge the one cap up with 20 volts hook the globe onto it and time how long it takes to pull that power down to 4 volts so, as you can see, I've got a chart I've made up here. We've got our volts down the bottom and our time in seconds up here. So, if it takes a minute 30 to pull it down to 4 volts from 20 volts, our line will be like that. So, we'll test it by itself first. Um, like I said, caps are very efficient, electrolytic caps. As you can see, we've got our 20 volts in it now. I'm not going to touch that power supply through the whole demonstration. So we'll disconnect that. Now, grab yourself a timer. You can time it as well. I'm going to use a trusty old iPhone. And time how long it takes for the light globe to pull this cap down to volts. Okay, so we're going to hook it up on three, two, one. As you can see our time's ticking away. Voltage is going down. It's a little bit of a boring test, there's not much to see if you thought you were going to see some huge generator whizzing around driving 30 light bulbs and all this ranting and raving about free energy over unity motors and then all of a sudden they all disappear and you can't find a decent plan to build one and no one's ever heard of them again. But this we're doing right in front of you so you can see what's happening as it's happening. Down to our 5 volts just about now at 49 seconds.
I have done this test numerous times with different voltages, taken it down, and the results are always the same. Three, two, one. and stop okay so we've got a minute 22 to pull that cap down it had 20 volts in it to 4 volts so that was our usable power down to that voltage so we'll use the red pen 4 volts a minute 22 is about there So my lines never end up straight, but you'll get the general idea. That that's our power drain, you could say, on the one cap with 20 volts in it, down to four volts. So that was our usable power. So what we're going to do now is disconnect that, shift this out of road. As I said before, that's going to be the cap with the 20 volts in it. Once again, as you would have seen, haven't adjusted the meter, still reads 20 volts. So now what we're going to do is bring over our SSG. This is going to be the flat half of our run battery, and like I said, if you've watched the previous video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, as before, the positive on the flat cap is going to be our negative. This is going to be our charge battery. Flat, nothing in it, as you've seen. Hooked up as per SSG. Like so. Now, I've left this on, forgot about it. Cap only takes a split second to charge, it's not going to put any more in it. I'm um, leaving it on longer, but just to make everyone happy and not so suspicious we'll do that again hold it on until it stops drawing current and we've got our 20 volts in it exactly what we started with and then the other two caps are flat so now we're going to hook the positive up to the positive and our negative from the flat cap or the cap with no charge in it, to the negative with the cap that has charge. So then we're going to start up our pulse motor. We'll let that run, it won't run for very long because as the voltage builds up in this cap and depletes in that cap, our voltage differential becomes less and less, so the motor starts running on less and less volts. This is basically just a demonstration um, for the people that don't believe that the Bedini pulse motor actually does anything or collect anything from anywhere um, hooked up in combined with my configuration um, it actually works believe it or not well, I used to be sceptical myself but um, instead of saying what a lot of rubbish, I decided to build by myself, experiment with it and find my own results. So now we'll disconnect all the caps without shorting any of them. And get rid of this. So now what we're going to do, we've got all our caps and we're going to hook them all up in parallel. And 
see what sort of usable power we can gain from these three caps. Now keep in mind we had two flat caps and we started off with the 20 volts just as we did with the previous test. going to do now set our timer. So like I said grab yourselves a timer and try it yourself. Keep a time on it just so you can compare it with my times. Okay here we go. Three, two, one. Our lights on. And uh, I'll stand the meter up so you can actually see what's going on here. Try not to knock everything down. The lights going. 7.7 .7 volts. So we're going to come down to the 4 volts just like we did last time. Hopefully we'll get it to last a little longer than it did with the standard cap. And if it does that, that means that the pulse motor actually did put some energy in to the caps from wherever it gets it from. Most people say the environment, well, the environment holds a lot of things. sure you can see the light. Still fairly bright. I noticed in my last video when I resized it to put it on YouTube that it actually trimmed the borders a bit and you couldn't see what I was doing over here quite clearly so I admit that it would have left room for me to stick some charge in it really quick somewhere but it wasn't the case. This time I'm just going to leave it as it is without shrinking it so you can see the whole thing happen right before your eyes. Ok we're getting close to our 4 volts now. Same globe. Nothing's changed as you would have seen. Nice and slow, isn't it? Well, if you have been keeping track of the times, you would certainly know by now that we're over the time of the first test already. And we're just about done. Two, one, and stop. Three minutes. Okay, our three minutes is right at the top. Okay, that's the power we've got just straight out of the 30 volt, uh, 20 volt cap by itself. That is the power line we got out of the 20 volt cap after it ran the SSG. Now, keep in mind that it's run that globe a whole lot longer, yep, but it also ran the pulse motor as well. Spun the um, flywheel on the pulse motor. So there you have it, that's the results of my test um, for this little demonstration. So, okay, I guess make up your own minds. Don't criticise things until you actually try them yourself. And have fun while you're doing it. Cheers guys.